In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Welcome to St Mary at Finchley's Harvest Festival. Um, as we record this service today, you may well hear the serenades of uh, drips into various buckets as uh, Storm Francis passes through. Well, today is our Harvest Festival and we're giving thanks for God's gifts in creation, celebrating the beauty of our natural world and dedicating the gifts of our lives to God. But first, let us say sorry for all the things that we have done wrong. Gracious God, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not cared for others as ourselves. In your great mercy, forgive us and help us to lead a new life in your service. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the Gloria in Excelsis. Let us pray. God, Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sit for our readings. The first reading is from Deuteronomy 
chapter 8, verses 7 to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, My power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. This is the word of the Lord.
lesson is from Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 15. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as much as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work, as it is written. He scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed, seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. The Gospel is from Luke chapter 12, 16 to 30. Then he told them a parable, the land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought that to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this, I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you've ample goods laid apart for you. Many years, relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded on you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. He said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? If then you are not able to do smaller thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if, so, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of faith, little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, but do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive after all of these things and your father knows that you need them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to start with a contentious question. Um, my uh, glass of water, is it half full or is it half empty? I wonder whether uh, you're a half full or a half empty person. Uh, it seems to divide people and it's, it sort of relates to our attitude maybe to life in general, whether we uh, see something as half full or half empty. Uh, it's interesting though that half can be um, seem to be opposite things, half full, half empty. Full and empty don't seem to be related at all. Uh, we do this in other uh, ways with our language. Uh, we could think of um, 
I'm being pessimistic about our chances, and we might say we've got uh, only a slim chance. Um, we could say we've got a fat chance, uh, but in fact, uh, we're being pretty pessimistic, whichever way we, uh, whichever of those two alternatives we choose, whichever we, uh, way we express ourselves. But these things are, aren't that important, uh, whether full is half or empty, uh, half is full or empty, uh, whether our chances are fat or slim. But think about care. Now, care is really important. Care for ourselves, care for other people, care for our environment and for the world. And yet, uh, we find care can be caught up in some of this confusion in the language we use. So just consider these, uh, these two uh, poles we've got. You could be careless, or at the other end, you could be careful. Careless, careful. And I guess most of us would rather be known as careful rather than careless. But then uh, another uh, pair, would you want to be known as full of cares on one side or carefree on the other? And though we might feel full of cares, I guess we would much rather feel carefree than full of cares. So uh, we need to do a bit of uh, balancing here. And uh, Jesus, who knows uh, the fullness of human life, uh, gives us a way to balance our understanding and our need uh, for care and to be caring people. And in our Gospel reading, he um, uh, does two things. He tells a story, then uh, gives a, a very famous direction to his followers. So first of all, he tells a story. Uh, this is the story about the rich man and his barns. Now, on one level, it seems like he's been uh, fairly careful. He's stored up all uh, the riches and produce that he had available to him. But in fact, he's not really thinking about anyone else at all. And indeed, his attitude, rather than being one of care, is in fact careless. He says, eat, drink, and uh, tomorrow, because I'm easy, uh, nothing needs to be done, I'm okay. So rather than being careful, he is careless. And uh, he comes to a bad end. But then Jesus uh, tells uh, that very, gives that very famous instruction, consider the lilies of the field, all these wonders in creation that aren't anxious about the future and yet are there in all their glory. He's telling us, don't be full of cares. Why don't we join the creation which is carefree. So we have in Jesus uh, examples, careless and careful, full of cares and carefree. And we're called to find our way to balance and to be good and caring people with the right sort of care. And this could be um, in big examples or in very small examples. I've got a small example here. It's so small. Ah, yes, you can just about see it. So here's a grain. It's so uh, small, uh, it would be very easy to carelessly uh, drop it and lose it. And yet if we're careful of it, we'll find both that we can look at it in itself and we see it's a marvellous and intricate thing. We could cut it up and analyse its structure as well. And if we take care of it too, it will grow and be fruitful. So from a tiny seed, we end up with something that's much more visible, something that will provide us with food. 
And here I've got my larger example, and let's put it on its axis. There it is. We have the world. Now, when we think about our world, uh, we may be full of cares. We may be uh, worried for the future. Uh, we may be careless, not thinking about the future at all. And we know from um, all that we learn about our environment and our climate that we need to take care of our world. We shouldn't be careless. We should, uh, nor should we be weighed down by so full of cares that we end up doing nothing. We need to be careful and to be able to enjoy our planet in a carefree way, the carefree way that is based upon a faith in the future, a faith in the goodness of God's creation and his love for us. So on this harvest festival we're thinking about the good gifts of creation and we are reminded that we need to care, we enjoy uh, what we are given with thanks because uh, when we think of the, our first reading which is from Deuteronomy we can think of all the wonderful things that have been given to us, entrusted to our care, but all things given by God. And we could think of our second reading, where in the second letter to the Corinthians, Paul uh, says that we need to be givers. We need to be cheerful givers, because we're recognising we're, uh, that we're given, things have been given to us, and we respond with generosity because they're not just our gift, they're a gift to the world, a gift for us to share and a giving that enables us to be enriched. So on this harvest festival we're called to live uh, in faith, faith in God who gives to us and entrusts to us. Let us be careful and yet live with carefree faith faith in God and let us give thanks and be generous in Jesus name. Amen. So let us declare together the faith we share. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. At this special Thanksgiving time of the year, we pray for all who work so that we have food to eat and share. We remember the farmers, both in this country and overseas, who work with animals and crops, often overcoming extremes of weather to get their produce to the marketplace. Also the fishermen who fight wind and waves to land their catch safely. We must also in our prayers remember those in the transport, distribution and retail sectors, for without them our shop and supermarket shelves would be empty. We also pray for those whose table may not be as full as others at this harvest time for those who are worried and struggling to feed their families. We give thanks to the various charities and people working in food banks at this time, who do such a fantastic job of supporting those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our schools and colleges and all the staff supporting the learning and education of our young people. We especially pray for the young adults going off to university for the first time. Keep them safe as they take their first steps living away from home and the support of their families. Help them make the best of this special time, even though the experience may be different to what they were hoping for. We also think about the family they are leaving behind, the parents who may be anxious about letting their children take these next steps. Give them the courage to feel positive about these new developments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our clergy and our church working to keep us together even though we have to stay apart. We are thankful for modern technology that still allows us to connect and share our faith through prayer and our services, 
both in church and online. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are once again facing more challenging times with the rise of coronavirus. Give us the strength to do what is right to help protect ourselves, our families and communities. We pray for those who are feeling lonely and vulnerable at this time. Help us to reach out to them and support them in any way we can. We also pray for those who may be sick or recovering from illness. We give thanks to our NHS, our doctors and nurses who continue to work tirelessly to help those fighting this virus, while still treating all the other people who need their help. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Those who sow in righteousness raise a harvest of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. With this bread we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. 
pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last, with blessed Mary and all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. the blood of Christ. Faith that's born as a mustard seed for you mountains, move mountains. Faith that's born as a mustard seed Move mountains by the power of God. Faith that's as a mustard seed will move mountains, move mountains. Faith that's as a mustard seed will move mountains by the power of God. Believe what Jesus said was true. Believe He meant it just for you. Wait and see what God will do as you pray. As you pray, faith as small as a mustard seed will move mountains, move mountains. Faith as small as a mustard seed will move mountains by the power of God. Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared in the bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you to all those who have already uh, brought harvest goods. Um, these will be collected and gathered together and we'll uh, uh, take them to Homeless Action Barnet and to the Barnet Refugee Service. I know it's all very gratefully received. Zoom coffee today is at 10 o'clock as usual. We have Zoom evening prayer at 7 in the evening. And the most important notice in this coming week is that uh, Richard's ordination to the priesthood is this coming Saturday. It's at four o'clock and uh, it can be watched, uh, uh, live streamed on the Facebook page of um, Emmanuel West Hampstead, which is the church uh, where it's taking place. I'll send that out. It'll be in the services of the week um, uh, uh, email that's gone out. Uh, I'll also send it out towards the end of this coming week if, like me, things disappear uh, down too far, too many pages down your inbox. So uh, uh, not many people can be there in person, but everyone can, or many people can be there uh, online and everyone can be there in terms of adding their prayers. So please do pray for Richard as he goes away on retreat and prepares for ordination on Saturday. Um, a week today will be Richard's first celebration of the Eucharist. Uh, we're hoping to be able to, uh, ra rather than a, a recorded service, we hope we'll have the technology working for uh, a live stream service at nine o'clock and then it'll be online for you to watch at other times in the day and indeed throughout the week as well. So let us sing our final hymn. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then we nation, sing of the Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring of the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. How high he has wielded on us his garment, risen from the snares of death. His word he has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Come then, all ye nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Courage in our darkness, comfort in our sorrow, spirit of our God most high. So let's for the weary, pardon for the sinner, splendor of the living God. Come then, O ye nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Praise Him with your singing, praise Him with the trumpet, praise God with the flute and harp. Praise Him with the cymbals, praise Him with your dancing, praise God to the end of days. Come on, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, 
pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use them to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.